What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Things You Might Have Learned in Your Science Class. Today we're going to be talking about the, uh, the orbit of planets, why they speed up and why they slow down. So first and foremost, we know that a planet in our solar system orbits the sun in an ellipse. The sun will be at one foci and the planet will follow the elliptical path for its orbit. Wait, something's missing here. Ah, much better. Now why do planets orbit the sun in an ellipse? Well that's because of Kepler's laws from the 17th century. I'll make a video on that one soon. Now the motion of a planet in an elliptical orbit is caused by one force and only one force and that force is gravity. Yes, that's right, gravity, the force of attraction that made that apple full of mathematical and physical insights land straight on Newton's head. All right, so we have a system of a planet orbiting the sun in an elliptical fashion, and we know that one force acting on the system is gravity, the force of attraction between the two bodies. But it looks kind of odd. At some times the planet can be real close to the sun, and at other times the planet can be real far away. Well, that brings us to some quick terminology. The place on the diagram where the planet is farthest from the sun, we say it's called aphelion. And the place where it's closest to the sun, we say it as perihelion. You can probably tell the planet got to behave differently at these two points. And if you think so, you are right. The key difference is in speed. The planet travels faster as it gets closer to the sun and reaches max speed at perihelion, and it slows down the further it gets away from the sun, reaching its slowest point at aphelion. Wait, so how does this happen? Well, here's that thing that you might have just learned in your high school physics class. If not, here it is for you. It's the conservation of angular momentum. If you've never heard of that, well, you're probably going... Essentially, when an object is moving, we say that it has momentum, which takes into account the object's mass and velocity. You can think of momentum as how much it would hurt if the object were to hit you. The greater the momentum, the more it would hurt. When an object is moving in an angular path, we say it has angular momentum. That momentum is governed by the simple algebraic equation. L, angular momentum, equals mass, m, times displacement, r, times v for velocity. Now, in a given system, the angular momentum stays constant unless there is a change in the net torque of the system. In this case of a planet orbiting the sun, we don't have any net change in torque, so our angular momentum will stay constant. So let's get back to the idea about examining the change in the speed of the planet. It essentially involves examining our equation for angular momentum, which was L equals m times r times v. If we look at our equation, we know that L remains constant, that M stays the same, and that R changes at different points in the path. Take a look at the different R's on the diagram to see, the ch see how R changes. Looking at our equation, if R changes, then V must also change to compensate for R's variation and to keep L, the angular momentum, constant. As R goes up, V will go down. As R goes down, V goes up. It's an inverse relationship. To help explain this concept better, allow me to assign some totally random, totally inaccurate, but okay for our purposes of understanding this concept and its greater significance to the universe, you know, some values to these variables. Let's say that L is equal to 100 kilogram meters, uh, meters squared per second, which stays the same the whole time. Remember, it's the anchor momentum, it's conserved. We'll make the mass of the planet m equal to 10 kilograms. That's also going to stay constant. The mass doesn't change. And the planet at aphelion can be a distance of 10 meters away from the sun. And at perihelion, we can say that distance will be 1 meter. Again, these values are completely inaccurate, not to scale whatsoever, but who cares? All we need to do is plug these values into the angular momentum equation for aphelion and perihelion and we can solve for their velocities. Plugging in to L equals m times r times v for the position at aphelion yields a velocity of one meter per second. And at perihelion, plugging into the equation gives us a velocity of 10 meters per second. 
So our model shows at perihelion, when the planet is closest to the sun, it travels 10 times as fast as it is when it is farther from the sun. That is, given our made up distances. This is a general pattern in planets. They travel faster close to the sun and, slow their and slower farther away from it. Hopefully these values help you see how the change in displacement from the sun causes this. Hey guys, thank you so much for checking out my video on the motion of planets. If you really liked that video, please, please drop a like button. That really helps out a lot. If you want to see more of my videos, and I have a lot more coming soon, please click that subscribe button. That also really helps out a lot. Remember, you're the best.